Good evening, everybody. A uh, very warm welcome to each one of you. So before we begin today's session, I would like to introduce you all to the uh, speaker for the day, Mr. Paresh Bhanushali. He's a founder and chairman of Pentagon Group. He's a founder and MD, is a graduate in business studies. He is a rich industry, he has got a rich industry experience of 13 years, which enables Pentagon to understand customer requirements. This is followed by actions that ensure that they match up to customers' expectations. He's a professional to the core. He leads his team by example by setting reasonably high standards of work ethics and customer orientation. He has established sound practices and processes which ensure that the customer service uh, customer receives the service as per agreed timelines, expected levels of safety, comprehensive documentation, all within reasonable costs. He has established a strong team, which through proper delegation of authority and responsibility delivers the services expected by the customer. He has added to this qualification by becoming certified in handling hazardous cargo. On the personal front, Parish is a strong fitness enthusiast and a movie buff. He also does his bit towards social causes. With this, I would, I would uh, welcome you to this session, sir. I request you to please take it forward and share your valuable insights with our students. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jamvi, for, for the introduction. Uh, hope, hope everyone is uh, doing good and everyone, is, uh, everyone in your family is safe and good. Hope all are doing good. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys must be curious to know uh, what, what Pentagon is all about and, and how it started, what is it, and in just 13 years and how it happened. So I'll, I'll just give you a, a short brief about it. Uh, before, before I started Pentagon, uh, I, I joined, as soon as I finished my studies, I, I joined uh, a, a custom clearance agency, a, a custom clearance firm, which was... Uh, uh, a typical uh, custom uh, company which uh, used to do custom clearances for the customers for the importers so i i since i was a fresher i joined there as a, a, a data entry operator uh, because i didn't know uh, anything about the industry so i joined as a data entry so what i used to do is uh, my job was to collect the data whatever uh, i mean the consignments arrive in india for the customers and feed up in the system upload in the system of customs and then uh, Okay. take it forward so that's uh, that's how basically that's what my job was so uh, i guess mr ashish will you please uh, request you to you know put your audio off so uh, uh, as i was uh, uh, you know uh, handling data entry job uh, so uh, in a couple of months i started learning a lot of lot many other things of uh, which was related to imports and then uh, uh, soon i got a grip of uh, the entire import division there and uh, started uh, uh, leading the import division of custom clearance department which uh, which maybe in a couple of uh, you know uh, six months of uh, time and then uh, uh, in that uh, uh, span of time we uh, my company uh, uh, started a freight forwarding division Fed forwarding division, as in uh, in those days, I mean, 13 years, uh, 15 years back, I was for me, it was something really new. And because all I knew is uh, what happens after the consignment arrives in India, and then what are the procedures for that? But how it arrives, what happens before that, what, what's there in back end, I didn't know anything. So freight forwarding was something really new for me. And really, uh, I, like I was really curious and excited to know what is it. So uh, as soon as we started the division, so after my office hours, I, I uh, you know, I used to sit back and, and you know, with my senior and, and try to learn and try to research what freight forwarding is all about. Like how, how do we send, uh, do they send emails and what, what do they write in the emails and how do you talk to a overseas partner? What are the language barriers and, and how do you convince them to, to you know, uh, get good price uh, for the customers and uh, how exactly the, the trade operates. So I used to always uh, uh, sit back after my office hours and uh, uh, you know try to learn. Then uh, in a couple of months, I, I, start, I started gaining some, uh, you know, a uh, lot of interest in, in the freight forwarding division. And uh, I, I thought of, you know, uh, getting more into it. 
so so i started doing some sales in in freight forwarding as with with guidance of my senior and and uh, i i got few customers and which made me more uh, you know inclined towards the uh, the division so i i thought of uh, you know uh, i generally have a uh, had a had a uh, you know a, a habit of foreseeing things of uh, what what's going to happen 10 years down the line you know today we are here what will happen 10 years later what What, will will this be the same i mean will whatever we are doing today would be the same or it would be different from what what is it so uh, uh, it it didn't take uh, me much time to convince myself that yes uh, freight forwarding is the future because custom clearance uh, sooner it would be uh, you know everything is going to be online on the 15 years back it was still online but there was no risk management system there was uh, everything was only the the upload of documents was online but everything else was offline like right from the delivery orders of the shipping companies and uh, you know transporters everything was offline so uh, but but it's that's not going to be the case in next 10 years which we soon realize but the freight forwarding is the future because uh, getting the consignments from overseas is not a, a easy job so that's going to flourish in future so that's we uh, i understood very soon so i tried to convince my bosses to uh, you know put me uh, to develop uh, put me into freight forwarding division and to develop a freight forwarding division so that we could be a, a you know a global uh, recognized company or maybe we we can uh, you know recognize a company as a, a international freight forwarder rather than being a small time custom clearance agent but uh, yes i mean uh, they they since that was a typical company they were uh, and and i started handling the entire imports they were pretty uh, you know in, in a comfort zone and they didn't wanted me to leave that particular area because if i had to leave that then again uh, you know uh, who would handle the imports uh, the department so but uh, so i tried to convince a lot to them but uh, they were like no you have to do the same job what you're doing or you can do whatever you want in custom clearance but no freight forwarding because and uh, you can do it after your office hours always but that was not possible you know every day because uh, you know due to time constraints because uh, my office hours that time was 9:30 to 8:30 not like uh, 10 to 6 10 to 5 so uh, it was being uh, i was uh, facing a lot of difficulties in in doing both the things that's when i uh, since since i ha- i had uh, i was uh, quite confident about my vision i uh, thought of switching on so that's when i i spoke to my family i spoke to my eldest brother at that time i even my dad was there so i i thought of uh, switching uh, over so then switching over but but how do i join some other organization or i uh, do i do uh, you know um, again uh, manage here itself or you know do something i was totally confused then uh, uh, i thought of why not start something of my own my my the family said why start something of your own let it be small let it be you be happy and just you know you because you you seem to be lot lot of you know you are stressed out because of uh, your daily uh, you know uh, frictions so uh, why not start a small company you just get two clients of yours you be happy so that's uh, i was like okay let's let's do it so uh, that's how uh, uh, i i look for a small office Uh, and that's how pentagon came into existence in a, a 100 square feet office uh, in in cargo complex uh, uh, it, it was a chawl small like chawl area wherein we started uh, um, in cargo complex uh, yes uh, around 100 square feet area which is uh, which was uh, much smaller than my uh, existing personal cabin i would say uh, right now so that's that's uh, how we so uh, i started pentagon because i was uh, i was a single man army I, i since i cannot i could not afford anyone i i had to start uh, on my own and be on my own so i write from sending emails which i learned in the earlier organization and uh, convincing the client making the bills making the delivery order delivering the uh, documents and everything everything uh, uh, i had to do on my own but but all these different type of aspects of uh, uh, you know of the trade helped me a lot because uh, that time it was uh, i used to do everything on my own but today even today those aspects help me a lot even today so because i when there is a problem today with sales 
or even with customer service or with operations or with uh, finance it's uh, i i am able to understand the problem and i am able to help them solve the problem right and it it becomes easier for me to uh, sit with them understand the problem and help them solving the problem and be a part of the uh, you know entire procedure rather than of uh, you know uh, uh, you, you must have uh, heard those lines uh, of typical bosses like they say come to me with uh, solutions don't come to me with problems so that's uh, you know uh, generally yeah, it, it's a typical line but i i don't buy that i i would uh, understand that boss <laughs> if if the person doesn't have a problem why would he come to you i mean if why uh, why are you a boss i mean a person if if somebody tells that to me i would say main kaam hi kyun karu aapke paas agar mujhe problem solve hi karna aata hai so main boss ke paas jaau hi kyun i just i go to my boss because i cannot solve the problem and and that's uh, rather here in pentagon we we try to train uh, our people our team in a way wherein they actually don't uh, have to come for a problem which is not uh, big enough uh, rather they would come to the their seniors only when the problem is big enough to handle rather than they would uh, like to they would uh, they should be capable enough to solve uh, the problem by uh, i would say themselves rather than getting it to uh, uh, to the seniors or the management then uh, with a lot of smart work i would say not uh, yes hard work also but lot of smart work in in span of 6 uh, years we we were no more i mean i was no more me it was we and uh, so uh, we 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 had a good team a uh, lot of people joined in we shifted to a bigger office and then much bigger office and and that's how with uh, you know only with my team members help i i uh, we could we could uh, grow and and we had a good name in freight forwarding industry so after uh, in a span of 6 years after 6 years then again same story i used to think what next what's going to be there after next 10 years so uh, we are into freight forwarding now after uh, next 10 years what how easy the spread forwarding would be since uh, there was uh, the the globe was uh, the globe you see see the globe is shrinking and and everything is getting consolidated i mean uh, the clients these days want everything under one roof they just want to make one phone call and they want everything to be sorted so in one uh, uh, everything uh, as i said so since uh, the consolidation was the next thing uh, in which the forwarders we forwarders had to be you know dependent on like only if the consolidators are willing to accept our shipments and if there's a small consignments uh, i mean the freight forwarders had to be dependent on consolidators so that's when uh, we thought of the, the next 10 years it's the consolidation business that is going to take over so i started looking for people to you know to to join me for consolidation business and uh, and uh, people who can join uh, with me in my journey to you know uh, achieve my goals so i uh, found uh, two uh, you know uh, dynamic individuals shailesh and sibu i would like to name them and they that's how i i found they used to work in a consolidation company and they were experts they were super experts of their industry and i i really appreciate their efforts and that's how i found them and and it was like why not uh, you know take them on board with me as my business partners and uh, you know um, give them an opportunity in even uh, get uh, myself a, an opportunity to get into consolidation industry because uh, that time consolidation uh, used to be done only by mncs only mncs used to do consolidation business yes even freight forwarders but freight forwarders was still i mean there were indian companies but consolidators there were very few indian companies because mncs would really not allow to sustain i mean the, the newcomers but as i said i had two gem of mine uh, which which uh, you know uh, helped me achieve helped us uh, achieve the goal and uh, we started uh, cargo consolidators india private limited and again uh, i i was you know uh, that same feeling of six that i had six years back seven years back uh, that same thrill and same high of starting a new organization with a small uh, uh, team 
and uh, you know uh, again starting from scratch that that was really really very exciting for all of us all three of us so that's how we got into cargo consolidators and honestly you don't realize within no time yeah. i mean um, we we uh, in in 6 years today we are into our uh, top 5 uh, consolidation companies consolidating consolidation players in in mumbai so that's how what we achieved uh, in consolidation and uh, having offices in bombay delhi chennai pune ahmedabad kolkata i mean sorry pan india with around mm, close to 300 plus team members and uh, offices all the uh, pan india and uh, i would say uh, then we ventured into uh, different cat- uh, sectors also like constructions and uh, restaurant business and hospitality and uh, like we've got our construction sites going on uh, at uh, different places in mumbai under the same name pentagon and again uh, hospitality hospitality business uh, in the name of pentagon um, nothing less i mean we would be uh, every year would be uh, uh, you know close to we would be doing a business of more than 200 crores and uh, that's how we uh, that's how is uh, you know my journey uh, our journey towards uh, the pentagon and uh, that's how pentagon cci pentagon group came into existence that's how it is now all these things i would say all all this entire i mean this success or whatever uh, i mean it's uh, since for me sky is limit we need to go a lot and and uh, whatever till date what we have achieved was not possible without my great team nothing would have been possible without the team that's how uh, that's what i always believe so how do i how do we identify those team members how do we identify those talents generally uh, we always go for 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 uh, uh, you know we tend to go for young talents only because the the benefits of young talents is like as i said uh, maximum population of our country is young and then it becomes more uh, we get more options to go for a right talent and uh, young team is risk uh, they are they are they are good at taking risks they are fast they are um, you know uh, it's uh, it's very easy to uh, uh, make them understand or they are they are quick to grasp things that's how it is and uh, the we face problems with with young talents basically uh and there are challenges but i would uh, come come on that later uh, how do we generally identify is uh, we we categorize people into three uh, leadership qualities uh, generally we we call it uh, darwinians then uh, then we call communitarians and then third one is missionary so darwinians are are, are people who are generally very aggressive risk takers they are strong personalities they want to always you know achieve more than their goal they they are they are always want to be on number one position they cannot be they are never satisfied with number two or number three they always want to be number one and even if they achieve their goal they want to just get more and more and more and more they are so hungry for for success and they are so uh, uh, you know ambitious it's it's uh, they they are a type of uh, a leadership that we look for that's one another is a uh, communitarian as i said these this type of uh, leadership is is they are good with handling teams there are different uh, type of teams like customer service um, operations uh, finance and and sales and a lot many things so wherein these communitarians come into the picture wherein they they understand the team well they they are good with communications between the uh, team members and they 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 can solve their problems uh, easily they understand what exactly the person is going through and what issues is he, is he or she facing and how to solve this and how to hold our team and be a backup for so called davinians so and then next comes the missionary 
missionary is 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 a leader who who generally holds all these departments and all these different type of sections and everything intact that that joins the dot and in you know he holds everyone together all the departments just not the team members the team members the departments and all different types of sectors that that person holds it together so that person is a i would say a uh, missionary but uh, uh alpa ji i would i would still uh, like to ask uh, the team i mean uh, my friends here uh, what uh, just wanted to know whom whom shall we uh, select just a question whom shall we select uh, among all these three if 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 uh, if i give a, you know happen to give a chance to select for a company whom would you i would just uh, want to know from the uh, yeah so students uh, anybody students, would like yeah. to uh, you know answer this question this is actually me, sir, you know finding out uh, a good uh, leader out of these three who are yeah, yeah uh, shruti is there prasad or shweta pramod you are there akshay you are there since uh, beginning anybody would like to answer second one is that difficult <laughs> the second one in the sense prasad uh, 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 shweta you mean to say machinery is it uh, no ma'am the one who holds the team together comment in okay no i would say all three the company would want all three leaders in the company the company cannot run on one type of a leader that's that's basically a a good uh, you know that's uh, the company needs all all of them it, it cannot be Uh, only a darwinian the company looks at it in another way it's the most important part for the company is uh, for for us is to place these leaders at the right position like for an example uh, a darwinian could be uh, if placed in sales he would just be best he would excel the sales uh, to a, to another level if communitarian being made a head of uh, of the customer service and all those departments he would be the backbone for darwinian if he cannot he or she cannot uh, uh, you know uh, hold the team together darwinians could not do anything without them and same likewise is for missionaries but but yes these days we we uh, what challenges and what uh, good things that uh, we see uh, when we when we um, identify and uh, these young talents is like good part is as i said uh, uh, you guys are well versed with technology i mean everything here is digital i mean today so uh, getting young minds into the organization is is uh, is very beneficial for the organization because uh, you know for an example if i if i ask any one of you uh if i talk about 3pl here that 3pl is a part of law one part of logistics and so someone out here i mean from your from you one of you guys would have already gone on internet and google and found out what is 3pl and next uh, couple of minutes you guys would know more than me what what is 3pl you know so it's that the young team here is uh, is more tech savvy and and you know they it, it becomes more easier for uh, an organization to make them understand what what exactly uh, the trade is all about but yes we we face challenges also with young minds like switch overs they the job hoppings they they just in couple of months or maybe a year someone who who has worked in in, uh, in a company wants to just you know looks for an attractive package in some other organization and he wants he or she wants to jump and uh, just because for uh, a good package but she or he ends up losing what the person should could have gained in the existing organization if that person would have stayed for a couple of more years or if not job hopping it's profile hopping it's uh, someone uh, who is in customer service wants to go for pricing pricing wants to go for operations operation wants to get in finance finance wala will say oh sales people oh they are making so much money oh let's get into sales then sales wala will so it's there's so much of headache let's let's sit back relax and get into customer service 
and because the grass is green on the other side it's always like that so so it's uh, that's the problem with the young minds it's like not job hopping then profile hopping that's that's uh, one of the problem or they don't uh, wait until they they come to another problem is they get saturated too soon are yaar 2 saal ho gaya bahut ho gaya itna kaam kiya 2 saal abhi kuch aur dekhte hain so rather than getting a, a you know a proper knowledge of uh, of uh, industry and another problem that we see is they don't gel up with their seniors who are little elder than them they want to make their own group and they they want to don't uh, they, are yaar He, are, he doesn't match my uh, you know caliber match my understanding or he's not of my frequency but eventually that's the biggest problem you guys end up losing the precious knowledge what you have got from your books the theoretical knowledge is and the practical knowledge is far more you know the both of them are far more different i mean the practical knowledge you only get it from the seniors who have been there in the industry for long years you can never get it in any book any lecture anything it's ha- it has to be practical and it's only when you sit with them you gel up with them when you understand how how they uh, you know tackle with problems like generally if you ask me if we are, uh, i uh, go for conferences or anywhere we i i tend to talk to seniors i tend to talk to people who are uh, you know much more elder than me so that i i understand what exactly the experience and issues and the challenges they have faced these years so that that should uh, that issues uh, you know should be overcome by uh, you guys because uh, and when when uh, this is how generally we identify uh, on these grounds and these leadership we identify our people then once we identify how how do we nurture them is next thing that 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 comes to us like okay now we've got good leaders we've got good people now, now how what to do with them so so how how do we nurture them we basically our, our organization works on uh, arm principle uh, that is uh, accountability responsibility and uh, maturity so that's that's the basic principle of uh, our organization uh, pyramid and like uh, accountability a person a leader is a is a true leader uh only if that person is able to hold himself or herself accountable for failures also not just success success to everyone would be like boss i did this boss my team did this but what about failures so the person or the leader should be uh you know uh, a leader should hold himself or herself accountable for failures as well as success that is accountability then responsibility that that type of a leader should have that responsibility to hold and uh, to to be with the team and and make the team uh, you know take the credit or or being responsible if a person is a performer so it's the leader's responsibility to uh, put forward or or give credit to the performer in front of management but boss this is the person who's performed this is the person due, due to which we have been able to achieve our targets so that is one of the responsibility that a person has to to with, within the team so the team always looks forward at the leader and that culture comes into the the team itself then the maturity comes into the picture wherein uh, uh, the leader should be mature enough to handle situations like we call the darwinians are the you know uh, these guys are, are always uh, top of the line and they are, they have a different attitude altogether because we are from sales and uh, but but when there is a problem what happens i mean these are darwinians they just get so demotivated that's when the 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 principle of uh, maturity and the leader of uh, that has that uh, talent would uh, uh, that you know comes into the picture and handles the situation the he he or she be motivated motivates the team and uh, you know for example these days we are facing a lot of issues with a high freight the freight was $400 a couple of months back now it's $4000 so the clients are just going crazy and i mean uh, so the situation is really i mean this uh, it is becoming really difficult to handle the situation so the leader has to take 
care of the situation where, wherein many sales people would lose their clients. That time, the, that leader would give some of their clients to them to keep them going. So that is a part of maturity that would, uh, you know, uh, that is very uh, important. So these are three principles. These are the principle of arm is generally, uh, you know, the our organization chart works on. And uh, again, about opportunity in logistics, I would say um, logistics is the next big thing, I would say. It's uh, logistics is just not uh, having shipments from uh, India to Singapore or Singapore to Malaysia or something or, or uh, United States or something like that. Logistics is an arrangement. Anything between two parties is, is arrangement between two parties is a logistics. So logistics would always be there. And India being a growing country, logistics is, is going to be the one of the pillars of the economy. So like, and again, the opportunities for you guys as a youngsters in logistics is Again, as I said, you guys are hands-on with technologies and uh, warehousing and uh, 3PL. I mean, I spoke about custom clearance. I spoke about freight forwarding. The, then, then there comes 3PL, that is warehousing. It's been, uh, you know, robotics and robots are taking over. All these, uh, uh, you know, packages, dimensions, and all these things are been, uh, they, that's been getting calculated as per algorithms. And it's, it's no more that, uh, earlier, uh, you know what you, it used to be. So it it is totally technology driven now. You you find a, a app wherein now, for an example, we uh, our next plan of actions, I would say, we are opening up. Uh, uh, we are coming up with uh, an application or or a, a marketplace like like Amazon's and Flipkart's, wherein the freight would be. Uh, you know, you can buy freight online. Did anyone think? 10 years, 15 years back that, that you could just buy freight online. You just click away, you get everything on your board, on your board, on your system, and you just book it and your consignment is booked and your consignment arrives here. And uh, uh, with uh, all these, uh, all the procedures are already online and with uh, these days even truckings are, are with, uh, you know, uh, equipped with GPS. So you can track the entire consignment just one click. So that's, uh, you know, that's the next thing that is coming up. That's, um, so uh, I would say logistics is the future, not just because I belong to the industry. It's, uh, it's uh, yes, uh, we, we, I've got a lot of businesses now, construction, logistics, but yes, logistics has always been my passion, always been my first love. And, and always uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, get uh, being into logistics, even uh, even if I'm into different uh, fields, that's how it is. Uh, one more thing, uh, uh, I would uh, I would have, want to uh, have a discussion with uh, the students, like uh, to be. Uh, Successful, I wanted to know, uh, to be successful in this industry or uh, rather than any industry, not only again logistics, in any industry, uh, I would like to give some personal tips. A personal tip I would say, if, uh, if you guys uh, want to hear. So if- Yes, of course, I, why not? Yeah, so, so but, but before that, I would like to ask uh, a question. Yeah, please. You uh, you heard me um, talking about uh, three types of leaders again: Darwinian, then uh, communitarian, and then uh, missionary. Uh, what do you think? Which type of person in this three? I mean, would be most successful? I gave you the departments also. I I, I uh, you know. Um, uh, give a brief about the departments that they are into. And uh, so which one would you think would be most successful? Can you guess? Guys, you can unmute yourself and answer the question, please.
Prasad, Akshay. We are on mute, I guess. No, am I, am I not audible? Okay, Pinky is uh, writing something. She has written communication. I want to have a vote, like which one, according to you guys, would be more. So you can put it in chat box, guys. Communi communitarians, missionary, okay. What about Darwinians? There's nobody from Darwinian. Okay. Ushin is saying missionary. Again, I would say it's all three. A person who is, yes, you're right. Uh, 92405, I don't know. I, I cannot see his or her name. Uh, the person who has all three qualities would be most successful. Like an organization that needs these all different type of leaders, an individual to be successful should have all these three qualities. But I, I, I can, I, I, I'm sure someone from you would be a Darwinian, someone would be a missionary or a communitarian. But what you guys got to do is a Darwinian should uh, uh, improve their skills of Darwinian as well as acquire the skill of missionary and communitarian. And likewise, the communitarian has to uh, acquire the skills of um, uh, Darwinian and uh, missionary on the, uh, as well as improve their skills for their existing leadership. So my friends, we uh, the three dimensional uh, leader, not one. That's I would. Uh, that's what I would like to conclude with. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I request all students to put your questions on chat box, or you can directly ask your questions. This is the best time to get in touch with the leader, like like sir, and to get answer directly from him. So, international business guys, marketing guys, I I I am sure you know you might be having something in your mind. Uh, excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I want to ask that how it's possible that all these three qualities should be there in, a, in an individual. Like, uh, for me, uh, like, how am I understanding now? It's like uh, having three, uh, these are three different personalities. So, like, these, can you answer? As, as I said, these are not three different personalities. I bifurcated it as a personality, as a leader. But if uh, it's it's a quality, as I said, it's it's a quality of a person, uh, a Darwinian. If a person is a Darwinian, it's not a personality. It's a quality in him or her. You know. So if a person, as I said, if if you are a, a communitarian, if you're good with handling team, you can improve your uh, your skills with handling team more and more. At the same time, you could get uh, uh, you know uh, skill sets or or try to uh, acquire skill sets of a darwinian uh, like or maybe like uh, getting into sales also as well as when you are uh, a team leader for for uh, different type of uh, departments as well as uh, within time you can uh, you sh you would learn to how manage uh, the uh, the team and the entire division or the company that that's the management skills so so that's how you uh, have to acquire those skills. So if, if if you ask me, for an example, if a person who is good at sales, but yes, he is good at managing people, and as well as, uh, you know, managing divisions, I would go for that person rather than going for an individual. Yes, we do go for individuals, but we've got few uh, many people in our industry, uh, in, in our organization itself, amongst, uh, I mean, as I said, we, we are close to 300 people, uh, and out of which maximum is when they started, they were just one of, they had one of the qualities, but as time passed, uh, they, they started acquiring more qualities. And for an example, a person who was an office boy, uh, I can give you a live example in, in Pentagon, is an operation head today. Is an operation head today. Just for your knowledge, the vice president of the company was, uh, was a fresher. Uh, the assistant vice president of the company 
was uh, uh, he didn't know how to do sales now he he is the uh, uh, you know biggest performer the business head used to not know how to speak <laughs> he was not that uh, good so so that's how uh, the you know it's the culture of the organization that that uh, you know makes you improve uh, and i would say again the the ceo of our company uh, you was a uh, earlier ceo for uh, she has already uh, you know had some lectures with you she was uh, handling global uh, company with you know i don't know hundreds and thousands of people so she is uh, with us today luckily and again as i said about cci the people who were just uh, just handling a, a division are the business partner are the owners of the companies too and and they have been able to uh, you know uh, grow the company so well and it's just a span of 13 years so that's how how you build culture in in your company how you build that uh, qualities within the team i hope i've answered your yes sir thank you sir yes sir we have question What from shruti biggest challenge to achieving the success challenges i mean uh, how i mean you will have to elaborate what type of challenges there are lot many challenges and uh, is it related to uh, i mean uh, what type of exactly you asking of challenges personal challenges or or business challenge or or how to as i said uh, uh, identifying uh, people or running the show or uh, how Shruti. different type of challenges are there in different <laughs> generally we face challenges in all the sectors but it's it's the attitude that you generally should have and the approach that you should have towards the challenge you you get a you get get to see challenge every day everywhere you you go down uh, you wherever you are you go down you want to go home you face a challenge that you don't find a auto rickshaw right this is one of the challenge that you face so that every day is a challenge now you face a challenge though how you solve it you go for a share rickshaw right so that's how it, it's it's up to the situation how how we face challenges how how we solve uh, how we solve, solve the problem so we face different type of challenges different types of finance uh, problems with shipping companies and uh, problems with customers bad debts and um, company you know a lot of issues within the uh, different teams and a lot of things are there so so it it depends how you take it forward and up. it's it's just the approach and it's just the approach that matters i mean if you you have a problem you you will always have a problem nobody here is happy you know, you know but it, you should uh, learn to you know feel that you are happy and you should be happy in that way and, and it's like the challenges uh, are how you approach and uh, positively that's the basic idea that you should always think that okay this is a problem but this problem is temporary this problem cannot be there always this problem has to solve it was not there yesterday it's not going to be there tomorrow it's just temporary so it's that's how you face the challenge rather than running away it's uh, it's you know or admit it basically admit your mistakes that's one thing that i always uh, you know um uh train or educate my team is with uh if you're doing something if you're committing a mistake first of all learn to accept it if you don't accept the mistake you're not going to change i mean you're not going to correct it right if you don't know if you go you think uh, you going on a right path you're not going to reach your destination because you think that you're going on a right path so until unless you don't accept no this is the wrong way so you don't change your way and then you you know end up uh, not reaching a destination so it's uh, admitting a mistake is also a big um, thing that is very important yes, absolutely so uh, one more question from my side basically i would like to know everybody every industry has faced challenges you know in this pandemic and uh, uh, according to students or uh, common people like as we understand the most uh, impact uh, you know the industry if you had faced is hospitality industry or logistics industry because their boundaries were sealed you know the people were not supposed to uh, deal with any kind of import export thing and i'm sure uh, there must be some solutions we had find out to come out of it so i would like to know how do you handle this situation in past couple of months 
see in hospitality uh, uh, we've got restaurant in pune we opening up in mumbai now but now again our pune is uh, it was shut till now and it's under renovation now so that time the most important part was uh, see we all faced a, a, a similar problem and, and the problem was not uh, different for anyone and so that at that time for me the most important aspect was to take care of my team because the restaurants were closed these uh, my team in restaurant uh, 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 you know the staff in restaurant is not that um, you know of high grade and they have their savings and all those things so it was very important for us to to it was time for us to give them back and and just uh, you know help them sustain and uh, we we couple of them we uh, uh, you know made arrangements for them to stay a couple of them we had to send them back to their family to take care of them and we we tried to manage and at least help them for their daily needs yes we could not be that uh, you know what we were earlier and used to uh, you know with all those incentives and all those things of course but yes we we helped them to to really sustain and till now we i mean until we open they are still waiting for us even if they are getting opportunities they are waiting for us to start and uh, yes there was a problem but since uh, that's that's the best part we've been uh, uh being into different industry we uh, we could sustain ourselves also because uh when there was a problem with the restaurant so lo- uh, logistics had a uh, was a backup when there was a there's a problem with logistics construction as a backup so so that's how it it goes hand in hand so in in, in logistics yes the couple of months the imports were closed I and mean, there was no imports happening but lot of uh, pile ups were there at the port so it was very difficult for the customers to make them understand and the the worst part was uh the finance part i mean they the everyone wanted to get their money out of uh, their credits and you know they nobody wanted nobody was relying on uh, on the on each other even the customers who we are we used to uh, handle for years and years since decades and they they were not Uh, you know uh, trusting their customers and eventually there was lot of everyone was trying to pull out their money as if the pandemic would just never end mm. so that happened for two months it was a very very difficult period wherein uh, we had to uh, our team stood by uh, the organization it's as i said it's only because of the team we are able to survive and it's only only and only my team it's the pentagon is only the team it's nothing uh, it's nothing related to i mean nothing no credit goes to me the entire credit goes to the team excellent excellent sir and uh, with this uh, thank you so much for your time sir and with this i would like to conclude saying that uh, your your session was awesome in terms of i would like to give you a comment saying that you're really good orator one of the best uh, sessions we had you know in the ceo series uh, definitely yes, there were a lot of learning in terms of three principles freight forwarding logistics and you know uh, custom clearings which is uh, definitely is important to come from people like you and students to understand because there are students from international business background as well who would definitely like to go into this particular sector so the vision coming from you would definitely help them and uh, and yes the best part was what you discuss is about the uh, davinian and 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 you know all those things what you discuss about community and and machinery i think yes i am pronouncing it right so that was the best thing and uh, and of course the culture what you said that you know i i really look up to people like you because when one uh, office boy can can become a ceo or or a vp or a head of a department definitely is yes, that's because of the culture of that organization and uh, the atmosphere and the importance you give to your team and that's what uh, we sh- students should learn from you and i'm really thankful to you to connect and i'm definitely look forward for further collaborations with you sir thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you take care thank you thank you students i would also like to thank pentagon employees who have joined and my students who have been patient and uh, have joined us thank you so much thanks all thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you sir thank